for this action are not difficult to discover. For it was well known that the study of Greek civilization was basic to an acquaintance with Western civilization. Which means, what did I say? Say, we better learn white if we gonna get with white. Check. And all who came after them is whitey on the slide. Somebody get mad and throw their rings back and shit and reveal all the secrets. But you have been told that the other members will beat you if you do. And I tell you now, if one of you break away from them funky fake Greek organizations and someone even threatens you, please tell me we will show them the law. That's right. The law. That's right. This ain't the Constitution. It's the law. with Western civilization. Although Greek culture had relations with the culture of the Orient, mm. holy now, seemed like they skipped over somebody. Let me go back. <laughs> you see, this might not just be an affirmation of Greek, but this is a denial of Africa. This is more than just I'm for this. This is I must not even recognize any other. Thou shalt worship no idols before the Greek. Right. And then go jump over to the Orient. Ain't that some shit? Look at this shit. It is. It is. Let me go back. The reasons for this action are not difficult to discover, for it is known that the study of Greek civilization was vacant, basic to an acquaintance with Western civilization, although Greek culture had relations with the culture of the Orient. Moreover, the Greeks were successful in their creation of free institutions. I damn it. Brother Ashwa Kwesi. Were the Greeks successful in building Greek free institutions? In fact, in the story on colonialism is back and not a moment too soon, they bragged that the Greeks were the first colonialist. Mm. The first colonialist. Mm. successful in their creation of free institutions and of organized city-states. Those were colonial states. They organized colonies. They forced people to serve them. They turned it over to the Roman. Reference was made repeatedly by Dr. Jackson and his five associates. There were six members in the starting of the Boule. Six members in the starting of the... Isn't that strange they took such a number? Could have found us another one. It was in this, you see, uh, Dr. Jackson and his five associates to the heroic and early age of Greece. It was this period that the concept of the Boule was formed. This was the Council of Chiefs, the leading noblemen of the heads of families. The Boule of Homeric times was a body of princes who were advisory to the king. So when we asked them who's the king, they said, well, where'd you get that from? In Salome's time, the Athenian Boule was a senate of elected men who numbered 400. 100 from each of the four Ionic tribes. They prepared bills for the action of the popular ecclesia. Their number was later increased to 500, chosen by lot, and again was reduced to 300. The name has persisted in Grecian history. In modern times, the lower house of the parliament of Greece, a body of 250, was known as the Boule. In modern times, the, the what house? Lower, lower house. Lower. What does that mean by definition? Somebody on the that there's somebody on the second floor, these niggas on the first floor. That means that when we talk about that they take the position of being a Grecian sphinx, we understand they're blocking for another person who got the ball. And that's the mystery to the boule as to why they will never own up who really has it? Because they think if you don't know who got the ball, you won't know what to tackle. So their goal is to knock you down and assure that their white man can score touchdowns. In, in England, House of Lords, House of Commons, the Senate, the Congress, the overseer. Understand this. Understand. Imagine you're on a 
plantation, and there's a guy on a horse with a whip, uh, making sure you're working. Uh, where you go? And never thinking about who's in the house, and never seeking to overthrow what they know was illegal. an examination in which their past lives were passed in review. We know that in Skull and Bones at Yale, when you do your initiation, you have to lay in a coffin butt naked. And you have to talk about your past lives, and everyone has to hear compromising stories about yourself that you tell other members to protect you from ever getting out of line. That's right. You seal your secrets in all the members. So there's a lot of homosexuality going on. I know Erwin Franz, who's a big time boule in Chicago, is big time homosexual. Big time. Big time. An oath was taken to observe the laws, to give advice according to the best, to his best power, and to examine his successors with fairness. Anyway. That's interesting. Let's go back over here a second. We don't want to appear as if we were remaining above the problems of most black people. We know we didn't get here solely by the dent of our own hard work. We owe a lot of people and we have to give back to our brothers and sisters. So you already know that they say they owe you. Right. Now you just knew who they were. So you can collect. <laughs> now the first bootleg chapter. The first bootleg chapter. Oh yeah, bro. We got it all. We got it. Hey, hey, yeah. This is the this is from the rostrum of Sigma Pi Phi. And this talks about the date, the not the date, but the order. Every chapter is named after a Greek letter of the alphabet. When they finish, they start the alphabet over with alpha. And then, after you run out of alphas, you go into beta alpha and beta beta. Now, I see that they run out of letters, you think they go get some comet and shit or something, you know? <laughs> Since they ain't got enough Greek letters to hold on. Now, imagine you had an organization in Philly, Chicago, Baltimore, Washington, New York, St. Louis, Kansas City, Detroit, Atlanta, Columbus, Northern New Jersey, Houston, Los Angeles, Minneapolis, Fondo, Arkansas, Pittsburgh, Dayton, Cleveland, Charleston, Nashville, Tuskegee, Louisville, New Orleans, Virginia, Berkeley, Cincinnati, Dallas, Tallahassee, Indianapolis, Oklahoma. You see what I'm saying? These niggas got somebody in every city and they still ain't doing shit for the people. You have no organization in America in that many damn cities. But now you've got 3,000 of the wealthiest black men of your race aligned in every city, including Liberia, Monrovia. And don't bust a grape. If, the, if one boule in every one of them cities told on a white man, you'd be in better shape. First chapter was Philadelphia. It started in 1904 in Philadelphia. Second chapter, Chicago. Daniel L. Williams, first man to do a heart surgery. He was one of the founding members of the Chicago Boule. Percy Julian, T.K. Lawless, many of famous doctors were also Boule members. Third chapter started in Baltimore, the Carey family. Anybody from Baltimore, you know about the uh, Careys uh, and, and Carringtons. Uh, fourth chapter went to Memphis, Tennessee. Fifth chapter was Washington, D.C. Carter G. Woodson, Ernest Just, Elaine Locke. Carter G. Woodson evolved. He was the Negro before he wrote about the using of the Negro. He wanted revenge. He later wanted to tell about what being a Negro was about. Because the whole thing to the boule, if you get to take black and Jewish relations, and you should, in different times I mentioned tapes, you might want to slide to the table and try to grab them, because they ain't going to be there, especially after I finger the tape. In the black and Jewish relations, remember we talked about how when the Jewish black alliance developed, that it was wealthy Jewish people and college-educated blacks. There were no wealthy blacks. Right. The first black millionaire was from Memphis, Tennessee, and he got it in 1900, Robert Church. But that was the first black millionaire. And as you can see now, here's Los Angeles. Los Angeles is the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen 14, 14th chapter. L.A. is the 14th chapter. What do you call that in Greek? See, 
doctors coming in, Albany, Georgia, Tyler, Texas. Now they start getting into even the smaller towns. Northern Illinois, Columbus, Georgia, San Jose, California. And see, let's look at some other California chapters. So you know people in those cities. There's Pasadena, Sacramento. Let's see here. San Francisco.
right, so you gotta hang with me. All right, all right. This is our last night. And I want to make sure we got everything going right. Now, watch this. Now, let's imagine what's our goal. One of our goals ought to be to sneak in the night they're having a boule ceremony. You know, initiation. One thing that is not in the history book is the ritual. It's very, I need to tell you this, because one day I'm going to come back and say, I got it. I'm going to say, I got it. I got it. We're trying now to get the ritual process. You can see here, there's a clue to something about the ritual here. Right in the hall. Oh, we gonna check it. Get in the goat, huh? Get in the hump. <laughs> Look at this. Archon Wesley was in charge of the initiation, of whom it was said, quote, he always succeeds in impressing upon the candidates for membership, the dignity and solemnity of such an occasion. It is... Y'all gotta let me do the talking. I, I don't have no amplification. I gotta shout over here. It is of interest to observe that the dress of the archons who composed the initiation team was most impressive. They were robed in Greek costume and each had a fillet around his head. Now, what is a fillet? Huh? A little headband or something? What's a fillet? Oh, you're blindfolded. Very good. Very good. And it says they were robed in what kind of costume? Greek. 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 So don't let them tell you they ain't, in, they ain't in no Greek thing. When you say, nigga, when you walked across the sands, you wore a robe. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Anyway, they were robed in Greek costume. Don't forget that. Robed in. We need to... And that means every one of them in that closet got a Greek outfit. Check? Yeah. All right. That's going back to what a boule is. All right. Now. Here is the cover of the history book. That's the cover of the history book. Sigma Pi Phi. As you can see, right, the first of the Negro American Greek letter fraternities by Charles Wesley. And that was the uh, anniversary issue. We have found about three or four different versions of the book as it's been updated. We have a 55 version, we got a 69 version, and we got an 83 version. So we're constantly trying to keep up with them. As fast as they get them, we try to steal them. <laughs> we're doing our best to keep you up with them as fast as possible. Now, I need to show you, I thought this was interesting. This is the uh, boule when it was founded in, in, in uh, Memphis. You can see that they use esoteric symbolism sometimes as they put the triangle behind them. Now that was the Memphis chapter when it started. I thought that was a little interesting that they aligned themselves like that. Look like what? You see they're all light on the page. But that's, uh, that's uh, about what we would suspect. Now we know we know that that wasn't a Greek symbol. Jack? Yeah. We know, if you just even take the book by Brother James, Brother George James, Stolen Legacy, and if you just look into the index at the front of his book and start looking at certain things that he says in the index, you will dispute all of the tenets that are listed in the Boulay History Book. In other words... In the Boulay History Book, he talks about Aristotle was the first to do this. Plato was the first to do that. Socrates did this. Right? You can take Brother George James's book, who may have died a Masonic death. Yes, sir, sir. Who died a Masonic death. And just look at the opening part of his book. You must get the book. Because this book will assist you in this exposing to the boule why they are a fraud. 
and of faith. And you can do it by using his book, and, and he talks to you in the book about why he did the book and what was his decision.